Hello everybody, welcome to the video on Tenere Cutes. So, to start discussing about Tenere Cutes, the word Tenere Cutes contain two portions, the Tenere and the Cutes. The Tenere means tender, so soft, tender and Cutes means skin. So, what we mean by skin of a bacteria is actually the outer membranes of the bacteria. So, what this means by tender skin is that all organism in this phylum lack the cell wall. Okay. So, the organ, uh, the important genera in this phylum, mycoplasma, spiroplasma, ureoplasma, phytoplasma, all lack cell wall. Instead, they have only the cell membrane outside them. So, just like that. But the cell membrane may be uh, many layered. Okay. So, if you want to draw the cell membrane over here, this is the cell membrane. They, this may be many layered cell membrane. Like in mycoplasma, we have three layered of cell three layers of cell membrane. So, this cell membrane may be many layered of layered, but the cell wall is completely absent. And therefore, this organisms, these organisms are resistant to penicillin, which you may know that it actually targets the cell wall and destroys the cell wall of bacteria. Okay, so if this organism doesn't have a cell wall, then what will it target? So it becomes resistant to penicillin. So, but still, we may use uh, 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 medicines like that of the chloramphenicol and the streptomycin and erythromycin to deal with these organisms anyways. So, to start with the discussion about the important genera, we have the single most very important genera which is the mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is a very important genera of this uh, tenericutes uh, at least from the examination point of view and then we have these <coughs> three uh, genera which we will also going to talk about but most of the time we will talk about this mycoplasma. So, let us start. So, to give you some uh, the s give you the names of some important scientists over here and give you a, a brief history that is in the 18th century in Europe a disease called bovine pleuropneumonia spread in cattle. So, initially it was thought to be a viral disease but then it was thought and then out then research was done on it and then people came to know that it is not a viral disease it is caused by some other organisms but at that time people didn't know that much about that organism so they were just constantly researching and then for the first time Pasteur first discovered them from pleural fluid of cattle okay so they Pasteur first saw it and Pasteur called it PPLO, pleuropneumonia like organism. Okay, so we are all we are talking about the mycoplasmas over over here. So let us write the first important point, which is that Pasteur. Pasteur. And if you can remember the year, it is 1843, which is quite difficult to remember, but still I am mentioning it over here in the video. Pasteur is has first discovered has first discovered mycoplasma from the pleural fluid pleural fluid pleural fluid of cattle and at that time he called it he called it PPLO which stands for pleuropneumonia like organism now then at the in the year 1900 uh, sorry 1898 nocard and raux okay so nocard and raux first obtained their pure culture okay so nocard and raux obtained their pure culture and then in later years like 1929 Nawak gave the name uh, mycoplasma to them. So, Nawak, I hope I am spelling it right. Nawak gave the name mycoplasma. 
Now we have just discussed about the scientist and the brief history, but what is mycoplasma? Mycoplasma are actually the smallest known organisms till now and they <coughs> actually are obligate parasites. So they cannot live, uh, live in a culture or live outside, they will die if they are not invading any host. So the all the organisms of mycoplasma <coughs> and for the matter of fact all tenericutes are actually obligate para parasites and they usually have one or the other host ok so the diameter of the cell can be as small as 0 0.1 micrometer ok 0 0.1 micrometer which is very strong and they can pass through bacterial filters very good now I have in my previous in the first video where we are we were discussing about the basic framework of bacteria I had classified it as gram positive bacteria you can see over here but you may very well call very well ask that why we are classifying it as gram positive bacteria means if we are giving the CVI complexes the CVI complexes will get dissolved when we are washing it with alcohol and then it will not take any such stain so then why were, why we are calling it gram positive but and and I will say you that this is a good question many places it has mentioned it that it is gram intermediate or gram undi uh, it is not defined or undefined by gram staining procedure but due to reasons unknown to me they uh, in m many sources very many authentic sources this tenacuities is classified under the gram positive bacteria if you know the reason you can comment below and I will be happy to read your comments anyways so that was another point about the tenericutes now as we all know they lack the cell wall they are typical colonial in appearance so this picture over here I am giving this is actually the picture of mycoplasma only ok so they are typical colonial in appearance so this is the picture of mycoplasma you can see these three three colonies they do not form a large colony obviously um, um, but they form colonies so you can see colonies are formed over here anyways I don't want to spoil the picture okay so they are typically colonial in appearance and can filterably pass through 450 nanometer bacterial filters another very important point is that they due to the lack of cell wall they don't have rigidity within them so if they don't have rigidity then they can they can just change shapes and they are called pleomorphic okay so pleomorphic pleo means i think many so many morph morphic means many structures so pleomorphic <coughs> that means they can change their shapes and due to this observation they are also called jokers of microbiology jokers of microbiology very good so they are pleomorphic jokers of microbiology they have they have their <coughs> mesosomes in their cell membrane which is very obvious because they are uh, if you have watched the video on the bacterial structure I have mentioned that people used to think that mes mesosomes are <coughs> help in cell division and uh, splitting of the genetic material but afterwards research had been done and it was been found that mesosomes are actually de degraded portions of the cell membrane ok so when antibiotics act on the cell membrane they destroy the portions of the cell membrane and they hang out and that we uh, observe under the microscope and uh, people uh, before the 90 uh, bef uh, of past previously called it ma the mesosomes ok so that is nothing that doesn't have any function like splitting the uh, genetic material ok so and it is very obvious that uh, this mycoplasm will mycoplasma will contain the uh, mesosomes as they are very very much pathogenic so they will be affected by the uh, what we call the antibiotics so they will have the mesosomes they will have destroyed cell membranes at some places 
anyways that was and some uh, what we call some pathogenic uh, mycoplasma include some like the mycoplasma pneumonia okay so mycoplasma pneumonia causes pneumonia atypical pneumonia it is called atypical pneumonia in humans okay so mycoplasma pneumonia some let me write some some pathogenic pathogenic uh, organisms from this uh, genera include mycoplasma pneumonia actually all are pathogenic as I told but some important which we need to remember are mycoplasma pneumonia I am not underlying or making it italics because it will waste the time okay of the video which I don't want okay so mycoplasma pneumonia I think that is the spelling okay there can be mycoplasma vaginalis there can be mycoplasma what do we say mycoplasma genitalis mycoplasma huminis all those type uh, to mention another fact is that mycoplasma genitalis causes the is a potential uh, pathogen for cancer okay so it can cause mutations in the cell and cause cancer such as in the genetic genital area like cervical cancer and all that and <coughs> mycoplasma is obviously not a part of the vaginal flora anyways mycoplasma plasma genitalis <coughs> and mycoplasma hominis which cause this pleuro pneumonia so mycoplasma hominis how can I miss that plasma hominis so that is about the mycoplasma which are pathogenic and then another fact is that the mycoplasma has the least amount of genetic material so in all the organisms till now known mycoplasma has the least amount of genetic material and that is quite obvious because it is so small it has so less uh, metabolism to do because it is so every time it is pathogenic so that's why it contains very less amount of genetic material okay so that was about the mycoplasma I have also mentioned that mycoplasma contains three layers of cell membrane and that's it then we will talk about the spiroplasma spiroplasmas are again uh, tenericutes therefore they lack the cell wall it is usual now the spiroplasma are actually given the name spiroplasma because they are spiral so let me give you a demonstration there one cell is only spiral not they are making a spiral structure from different cells not like a cell a cell and they are just forming a spiral structure okay so that's not the case so that's not the case one cell is actually spiral shaped cell like that helical shaped as, uh, as not that S shaped it is spiral shaped okay so to demonstrate it better it is spiral shaped cell okay so that maybe that one if you visualize in the, it in 3d so it is spiral shape and it moves in a uh, it moves in a helical pattern like that of the DNA so so uh, we it moves in the helical pattern okay so it if it is if this is the organism it will move in helical pattern it is very difficult to uh, visualize it in uh, uh, give draw the diagram in 2d so it will move in a helical pattern by rotating and all that uh, anyways that is called spiroplasma and it doesn't cause much disease in is diseases in humans although there is a debate uh, uh, that spiroplasma may cause the disease which is the spongy form encephalopathy which you know which I have discussed about uh, in the prions and have t said that it is caused by prions but many also debate that spiroplasma can cause spongy form encephalopathy so that's an area of debate but uh, spiroplasmas are found to be endosymbiotic endosymbio to be in endosymbiosis with insects so it has been uh, found it to be in endosymbiosis with drosophila and spiroplasma may uh, regain may help 
a fly not human beings only a fly may help a fly or a insect to regain its fertility if it is uh, if it is uh, pathogenized by a nematode or if it is attacked by a nematode so that nematode may destroy its fertility but this pyroplasma may do may be in, in endosymbiosis with that uh, fly or with that insect and then it may help it to regain its fertility in some manner anyways that was about the phytoplasmas okay so that is not much important now we will talk a little bit about the uroplasma so what is the uroplasma so as the name suggests again they are urease positive so what is urease urease is actually an enzyme found in this type of organisms which breaks down urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide so <coughs> they can do it and they are actually found in places where there is urea maybe in the urine and all those places so that's why they are called ureoplasma and phytoplasma is another type of mycoplasma or oh sorry another type of tenere cuties and they they are actually attacking or they are actually parasites on the plant so they actually have the vectors as insects and insects uh, when they sit on plants they this micro, uh, phytoplasma can go into the phloem tissue of plant and then become parasites over here over there okay so that's why they are called phytoplasma this phyto phyto means plant okay and here you may wonder that why it is called mycoplasma because people you uh, earlier used to think that th this has some relation with the fungi okay so that's why they are called myco myco means fungi okay so people earlier used to uh, classify everything under fungi which they didn't uh, used to understand okay anyways so that was all about tenere cuties hope you liked the video uh, please like comment and subscribe and meet you in the next video where we are going to talk about the gram negative bacteria which are the aquifici fcb group all those we will going to talk about bye